One thing I've always liked about Macintosh computers is how quiet they are, which is actually a design relic of the bygone Jobs era. Now, you can rightfully argue that this is often the result of higher than ideal idle temperatures, thermal throttling, and wimpy or outright stupid thermal design. I'm looking at you, MacBook Air. There's even a story of Steve Jobs being so insistent that the Apple III not ship with a cooling fan or vents, despite the behest of engineers, that the board chips would become so hot they'd actually work their way out of their own sockets, resulting in a computer with garbled text on the screen, fried hard drives, and more. And what was Apple's fix, you ask? Well, that customers simply tilt the front of the computer up about six inches off of their desk and then drop it to reseat the chips. <laughs> It's so stupid. Okay, now look, fan noise is annoying. And as an owner of many PCs over the years, I have frequently been frustrated by the consistent fan whine I'd hear at idle. More recently, my current home gaming PC sounds like an engine screaming for takeoff while playing Flight Simulator 2020, even being water-cooled. I've done a few builds in cases designed to run completely fanless, and they do work, but typically only with low TDP CPUs and no GPU, which is not a tenable solution for a gaming PC. But there are hardware and software modifications I should be able to make that will allow me to create the quietest PC ever, that even under full GPU load in AAA games or full CPU load in compute task stays whisper quiet. With every PC build, there begins a motherboard, and this is the Gigabyte Z490 Vision G. Uh, why did I select this motherboard? Well, it's the perfect pairing for the CPU that we've selected, the Intel 10600K. And also, uh, I think it's one of the most handsome looking boards out there. Obviously, I didn't choose it just for looks. The I.O. available on this board is pretty dang good. You've got a fair number of USB 3.2s. You've got a Type-C over here. You've got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, which is very, very nice, especially because uh, some devices in my home, like my NAS, are actually 20 gig capable. And so that's pretty handy. And then it also supports, as most motherboards do, but it has, it has a very easy um, uh, Intel Devil's Canyon drop-in card, which is handy if I wanted to add Thunderbolt to the computer in the future. Uh, now, the chip I've selected might be a little confusing to some, especially in the year 2020. Intel, Quinn? Really? Come on. Let me tell you why there are a few reasons this seems like the best chip for the job. Uh, number one, this chip runs cooler than something like a Ryzen 3700X, which makes it a pretty good candidate for a silent PC gaming build. The other reason is because while it doesn't excel in uh, multi-threaded, multi-core processors quite as well as something like a 3700X, it does have a respectable number of cores. And for gaming, Intel is still king, and this chip is still king. Now, if I were a streamer, if I was doing content creation on the side, that would change the formula and Ryzen would be a better option, but I'm not. This is a gaming machine, that is all I'm going to do on it, and therefore the 10600K is just about the best CPU on the market for that purpose. And look how tiny and cute it is. I feel like CPUs have gotten so monstrously large over the years, this thing is little itty itty tiny bitty. And then we've also got the beautiful LGA 11XX socket that continues to be one of the best out there. Um, sorry, uh, AMD, I love you. Ryzen's awesome, but your socket technology sucks by comparison. I just put that down and boom, we're done. And guess what? When we need to pull our cooler off, we're not going to rip the CPU out of its socket and possibly bend the pins. <laughs> okay, on the memory front, we have got some HyperX uh, DDR4 3600 megahertz memory. I don't know the model name of this. All RAM's the same. Uh, RAM is made by basically three companies. You've got Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron, or Crucial. And that's it. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose because they're all basically the same. Uh, it, had, it does have really heavy, actually, heat spreaders on the side. But it's just nice attractive black RAM. There's no RGB madness or whatever, but this is supposed to look clean. And I think this does the job. So we have got four DIMMs of eight gigs a piece. So we'll be running 32 gigs of DDR4 memory in here, which is going to be pretty awesome. We'll open up all of our sockets and uh, put one in there, two in, three in, four in, And we're done. Time to mount our CPU cooler. What is the CPU cooler, you ask? Well, it's this, the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. 
For an air cooler, this thing is very, very expensive at about 90 bucks. Most people often compare it to the Noctua NHD15, which if you get the Chromax version, is about the same price, about 100 bucks. Uh, now for an air cooler, that seems a little expensive, I, I gotta be honest, but that's because its performance is very, very good. And in the case of this, the Dark Rock Pro 4, it's very, very silent. And that is thanks to the fans that have silent, literally in their name, the Silent Wings fans. Uh, the case that I have at home, I have the Silent Wings 3, and I really like them because they are very fantastic fans that are very, very quiet. So while your performance in the temperature department is going to be about a degree or two worse uh, than something like the Noctua NHD 15, I think it's going to end up being a better option because A, our processor isn't going to be that hot, even overclocked, and then B, these fans are quieter, which again, this is a silent build. And we're done! Well, at least with initial assembly. We've got our CPU inserted into the socket, we've got our cooler installed, we've got our memory inserted, and then we've also got our storage installed as well. And now it's time to take this board and throw it inside of the case. The case, you wonder, what on earth could be the case? Because that is a pretty important part of a very silent PC build. And I'm not sure I've made the right choice, but I'm feeling optimistic. The case is this, the very attractive, well, I guess not in its current state, but normally, Leon Lee O11 Dynamic XL. There's really two methodologies when it comes to creating a silent PC. On one hand, you can do something like Be Quiet has done with their dark base series of cases, which is actually what Derek's workstation is running in. Uh, they basically take the computer, you stick it inside a really well sound sealed environment. So there's foam padding, there's a bunch of uh, sound dampening material, there's small air baffles to let air in, but not that much air. And the end result is that the computer is really quiet. The downside is, is that because you're restricting basically all airflow, <laughs> they get very, very hot. And sometimes in certain cases, when the computer is working hard, the fans spin up so fast and so loudly that it almost mitigates the purpose of having a quiet case or sound dampened case in the first place. That's kind of the Apple methodology. On the other hand, where the PC market seems to be moving, and I think it's a better option, is to the really well ventilated mesh cases. Uh, newer cases have completely mesh front panels, completely mesh back panels, and some nice light side panels, which create a really conducive environment for airflow. And what happens is if your components stay cool, it doesn't really matter that your fans are spinning and you technically can hear them and they're not well sound dampened because they're not, very, they're not really spinning very fast at all. And if they don't spin fast, then they don't make that much noise. And they don't need to spin fast because the temperatures are good. This is kind of somewhere in the middle. It isn't a mesh case. It is a more traditional, attractive looking tempered glass on the side, tempered glass on the front uh, with air inlet on the side and the back. But Gamers Nexus and a number of other people uh, have basically determined that this is a really good case for cooling. Uh, Der Bauer, who's a famous overclocker, which you most have probably heard of that have any interest in PCs, helped design this case. And from a kind of thermal performance standpoint, it's very, very good. This is an excellent case for water cooling, which we won't be doing, but it's an excellent case for performance in general. The question is, is it quiet? And I don't know. Early reports, kind of some of the stuff I looked at is that it's probably not the quietest case out there, but because all of our components are so quiet, I don't think it's going to be very loud at all. Next up, we gotta talk about the power supply. You might be thinking, really, Gwyn, power supply? Is that all that important? Well, yes, actually, because the power supply can actually be a fairly major source of heat and noise inside of your build. And that's why I have selected this, the Corsair HX1000. A 1000 watt power supply, you're probably thinking, why would you do that? You're right that it is completely and totally unnecessary and overkill for a build like mine a single GPU computer with an i5 Intel processor that we're not really overclocking that much. I mean, I could do fine with a power supply that had half of the rating of this, 500 watts. So why haven't I done that? Load. Load is the ratio of power that you're actually consuming to power that your power supply has available to your disposal. Now, the higher your load, Typically, the hotter the components get inside of your power supply, the faster the fan will spin to cool those components, which means the louder the power supply gets. Now, most higher end power supplies that have a lot of wattage available at your disposal will not even begin to spin the fan up until you're at 40 to 50% load. My computer, 
I'm surprised, I, I doubt it will even get near 500 watts, which means if I have 1,000 watts available, this fan will probably never, ever, ever spin up. And if it does, it will be such a low RPM that its kind of addition to the noise created by the computer is basically negligible. Is this a good idea for any other build that you don't want to be silent? No, it's a waste of money. But in my case, I do want a silent build, and so it's going to be a pretty good option. Next up are case fans. Considering that fans are basically the only component inside of a computer that actually make noise, choosing good fans is important. And case fans are important because they regulate the air that comes in and out of the case. As we learned from my vacuum cooled PC video I did a few weeks ago, airflow is super important in a PC build. And I've chosen the Corsair LL120s. They're not the quietest fans out there. But considering how much air they move, they are pretty quiet. The benefit to this is that the more air you can move, the lower the RPM you can spin the fan. And the lower the RPM you can spin the fan, the quieter it will be. So at its max RPM, these fans are not the quietest on the market. But as long as we're able to kind of manage airflow pretty well, which this case will allow us to do, we should never have to run these fans at max fan speed. And so that fan speed, kind of that decibel rating shouldn't really matter. And these should run very, very quietly. Besides, these are the only quiet fans with RGB and everyone knows you need RGB. What is often one of the hottest components in a PC a GPU is also one of the loudest. Now, there are a couple of different kind of cooler designs that you'll see on GPUs commonly. The least efficient and what's now becoming a little passe is a blower style card. There's one fan on the end and it basically sucks air in, drags it across the card and spits it out of the back of your PC. Newer, uh, hotter cards have moved to a design more like this, where you have two or sometimes even three, sometimes even four, uh, more traditional fans here on the front. Uh, they come with certain compromises like big heat sinks like this. But um, because they mostly attempt to cool everything, they don't always do the best job. Uh, sure, they make contact with the die, but they're also cooling other hot components like your RAM and your VRMs. So we have opted in for something like this, which is going to make our otherwise pretty beautiful PC build very, very, very ugly. But again, this is for quietness, not for beauty. So we're just gonna lower it on and <laughs> not quite yet there, mister. See, here's the thing. Obviously the die is the hottest component of the GPU, but like I mentioned earlier, your RAM chips, your VRMs, MOSFETs, those also get quite toasty. Now, if you look at your GPU inside your computer, you'll actually see, you can see some little blue padding in here that not only do they, they cool the actual chip, but they cool these other components as well. And usually they slap the cooler on and you're ready to go. Heat is transmitted from those smaller components to your cooler by using these. They're basically little blue foam pads that conduct heat quite well. The thing is, is that our cooler doesn't really account for that. Some cheaper solutions will give you little tiny heat sinks that you can glue on with thermal epoxy, but it's not really the way to go. One of the reasons this is so, such a good solution, allegedly, is that it makes those components much cooler by cooling them from the rear. So normally you put the thermal pads on the front, you slap the cooler on and you're set. But this one actually does it in the opposite direction. Now the bottom of this uh, is all metal, which sitting on a bunch of capacitors is not generally a good idea. And so we're gonna have this little plastic layer. We're gonna put it over the top of the GPU. And then on the other side, we're going to identify all of our components that get toasty and then cut little sections out of the plastic so that we can put a thermal pad on and then use a couple of spacers and then affix this cooler right on top. So all of those other components are cooled by this and then the main die is cooled by our primary fan assembly system. Got it? Okay, so we've got our thermal compound on our cold plate right here, and then we've got our die on the other side ready to be mounted, all cleaned and everything. So we are going to take the GPU and slowly lower it onto these four posts until there we go. And then after that, we're going to take this big old chunk of aluminum and align it with our pads and align it with the rest of our cooler. So right there is about where we want it so that we can see the four holes. And that looks really, really nice. So we've already got our thermal pads. You can see some of them aren't making exact direct contact, but that's okay. It's, uh, it's better than nothing, that's to be sure. And then we're gonna take these little shims that just kind of sit across the length of the uh, cooler up here. And then we're just going to fasten 
the screws down so that this stays affixed to the top of the card. So we're gonna take these, we're gonna take some of these screws and we're gonna tighten them all down. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the flip side. Okay, now that we've got the card clamped to the cooler, we need to clamp this top plate to the card itself. Uh, you can see there's a little flex there and we need it to make full contact with our PCB. So they have these little uh, goofy looking adapter dues that are gonna sit uh, right in between the card and this metal slot right here. So we're gonna try and push this through, there we go. And then we simply screw this down, repeated six times. Okay, so it's done. It looks like an absolute monstrosity. It is incredibly ugly and just gigantic and so heavy. This is the heaviest GPU I have ever felt. But the good thing is, is that there is this little bracket that will allow us to place it nicely inside of our case, which I guess it's now time to do. And, uh, oh crap. I didn't think about this. This VRM RAM cooler is so thick that it might collide with our CPU cooler right here. Let's see. No! So, I have two options, I guess. One is run it in the PCIe X8 slot instead of the X16 slot. Now, performance on modern GPUs even it is not that different in between the two slots. Most people would be surprised. Um, you're talking difference in most games of three to seven frames per second if I ran it in this lower slot. But I don't really want to do that because this was supposed to be the ultimate gaming machine. That's why I bought a 10600K. So there's one other thing I, from another build that we pulled apart the other week. We had this vertical GPU mount. And if we stick this PCIe extender into the X16 slot, and then screwed this in, we might have enough clearance to be able to fit this. Yeah, there is. Okay, so Arctic provides this mounting plate to be able to offset some of the pressure experienced from the very heavy vertical force pulling down on the PCIe slot. So the tendency is to have it droop this way, and this corrects that so it'll sit here. Now, the good thing is, is that because this is sitting vertically, most of that stress is handled by this actual L bracket that, while flimsy, does seem sturdy enough. And if it's not, we can put like, I don't know, a little piece of plastic or 3D print something underneath here. The problem is that without the stock cooler screwed into the GPU plate, if you look right here, there's quite a bit of bracket sag and I don't want to ruin the bracket on my GPU because the GPU is too heavy. So I do think I need to use this. However, you'll note that, uh-oh, <laughs> there's an item in the way. I mean, it, because again, we're mounting this vertically even though it's supposed to be mounted horizontally. So there's no space over here and there's only two slots of give. So this is a four slot little device and we're gonna have to take out two of these four slots by just dremeling it off and hopefully that'll be okay. Okay, this thing is crazy quiet, but there's, there's a problem. See, while it's quiet right now, about as quiet as my Mac Pro, frankly, once I put the machine under load, even just the CPU, I don't even need to accelerate the GPU, this thing gets, well, not very quiet, very fast. It's not loud, it's quieter than even some PCs I've had at idle, but it's not the quietest PC ever, and that's the name of this video. So, well, what do we do? this. We are going to reset the computer and we are going to enter the BIOS. We can manually set fan curves in most good motherboard software. And because directional airflow in this case is so excellent, thanks to fluid dynamics, as long as we have good directional airflow, we don't need that much directional airflow, which means we can keep the fan RPMs on these Corsair fans low, which I did say are a little loud when you push them too high. So if we set our own custom fan curves, keep the RPM low, this thing should stay whisper quiet even under full load. And thermals are so excellent right now that I think we're gonna have quite a bit of leverage to tune the fan curve the way we want without any compromise in performance. Okay, so the fan curves are adjusted and this thing is quiet. I mean, really quiet. So I am running Unigen Heaven, a GPU benchmark in the background. And then I am going to go over here and open Cinebench. And you'll see that not only is the system quiet under full load, but it doesn't really compromise that much on thermals. 
It does slightly because that's the nature of the beast. And we are in a really warm, probably 80 degree Fahrenheit room. We shoot with the AC off. And look at this. I mean, the GPU under full load with a hot CPU is 65 degrees Celsius. When we're playing a regular game, like a game game, the, the CPU is much cooler and the GPU sits around 50, low 50s to mid 50s degrees Celsius, which is amazing. That is so, so good. Way better than the stock cooler to be sure, but even better than most kind of aftermarket third party coolers. And then on the CPU side, we're hanging around 82 degrees Celsius, which is hot, make no mistake. But that's a combination of um, the fans being turned down from a curve standpoint. 82 degrees Celsius is warm, but not dangerously hot, uh, way far away from the T-junction temperature. And then we've also got the GPU under full load. It's very seldom do you use 100% utilization from both your CPU and GPU at the same time. And I'm in a hot room. So this is worst case circumstances and it's still performing absolutely excellently. So I'd consider this a success. It's about as quiet as my Mac Pro under full load. I can hear it, but it is not loud. And uh, man, I'm excited to game on this thing because it is going to be fantastic. If I wanted to go a little step further, I could use something like a Noctua uh, NFA12 or uh, there's a couple other options. The Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 would be quieter than the RGB fans I've got in here. But I'm a little vain. I like the way my system looks. And uh, I mean, you can hate RGB, but it's better than a brown fan. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like this one, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.